Yep. And if they get that Sivir, which they may, considering they're on the blue side, uh, they can just run you down and dive you. Well, against KT, you either need to ban the Sivir or you need to have a very, very good plan to stop it. And, and it's really hard to because their ult just lets you get around so much. So Annie ban first. Given Wolf's game with the Master Yi and the fact that he ganked mid so many times to shut down Coco means that Nogne's probably pretty afraid of that ability. Damn it, Toa. We oh. don't get to see Faker's <laughs> Echo. I'm sure we will eventually, but... Not this game, maybe game two. The fact that they think it's worth banning out, because you know what? I promise you it's not Bengi or, or Marin who's playing that <laughs> yeah, champion, right? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can agree with that. Maybe Marin, but you would think like someday would be all over this Echo pick. That would be something that he would really want to pick up just oh, given yeah. his style. Uh, but we're not going to see it. And instead, Callista and Gragas will be the final two bans. That is correct, so. Rek'Sai could be the priority, and it will be. A Rumble available as well, so Marin can pick that up if he wants to. He can grab that Maokai as well. Hecarim could be a strong option, especially if you're worried about facing a Sivir. Now, do you do that, or do you just take the Sivir away right now? I think you take the Sivir. You definitely take the Sivir against KT. Uh, now, what else you pick up? Could be a Maokai here. Remember that both Sunday and Marin, that's a very high priority champion for them. Marin has been doing very well on the Rumble. Ooh, wow. What interesting. Oh. Evelyn Locke early. Yeah, Bengi does have, uh, you know, he's won two out of the three games he's played Evelyn on this season, so he hasn't been, hasn't been bad. It's just that maybe they're afraid of someday playing that top lane Rek'Sai, which is why they're, they're taking the Evelyn, so that ah, they I couldn't see. have both. But I think here that you really start to think about taking away that Sivir. And will we see Nagne grab the victor? Faker is professionally undefeated on victor. It is a, the champion he will go to this season. I think it's smart, too, to take the John away at this point. They're really limiting Wolf's support options. He's probably just going to have to go with Thresh here, which isn't so bad. Thresh, I've heard Thresh is a pretty good support pick. Not too bad. He's, uh, he's all right. He's OK. Pretty good with uh, Rumble and, uh, and Evelyn, actually. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see the Ash. and. If you think about it, the Ash Arrow, not a bad way to stop a Sivir Engage cold. Uh, as long as she doesn't spell shield it. That could go awry. It's it's also, it's not just about hitting her specifically, but the other people that are getting the speed buff from her too. So I think, I, it, could, I think it could work. Ash would be a bit of a surprise. It no would. one has played new Ash in Korea yet. And I think they're going to take the Sivir instead. Yeah. Certainly is a safer pick to go with at this point. Especially taking Ash against a Rek'Sai. Uh, that lower mobility early on in the laning phase against an, a dangerous knockup like the one Rek'Sai has could be yeah. problematic. Interestingly enough, Bang has only played one game on Sivir so far this season, and it was a loss, which is a bit shocking. I think that was the game with Easy Hoon's Cassiopeia against Samsung. Uh, it could have been. Well, it would have had to either be against Samsung or Anarchy. Right. Yeah. Oh boy, it's going to be one of those games, Noah, where Arrow plays Draven and oh, I loses. would love to see that <laughs> so much. He only gets one Draven game a season, and he's already used it up. That's actually written <laughs> into his contract. Is it really? You think so? I would if I, I yeah, was KT. I was going to say, yeah, I would, I'd make sure that was in there. Uh, that's a pretty good idea, yeah. Well... Uh, actually, the, the Bang Sivir game was against Anarchy. Oh, it was the Anarchy Just game with the up, Oriana? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's right. That was a Faker's Oriana game. game. That, was, that was an awkward one. Oh, man. I think it's going to happen, Noah. I think we're getting this Draven again, and I think the Maokai is a very smart lock, and they've got a lot of peel so far for their back line. Okay, there the we Vayne go. The Vayne is the better choice. Clearly, you're going to have less lane dominance, but look how much peel they've got. They've got the Maokai and the Janna just to keep people away. And that helps out a lot with the Victor and the Vayne, who really do need some more protection in order to maximize their damage. Well, you can put down the gravity field the zone a little bit too, and Vayne can just tumble into it essentially to uh, stay safe. So there's a lot of synergy there between the rest of the team and that pick for Arrow. So what do you think it's going to be? What wacky, what wacky new champion has Faker come up with I, next? I really, I really don't even want to try to guess, man. I don't know. What do you think about... Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Now I can't even begin to predict. You'd think he'd play Cassiopeia here, but he may go back to this Oriana just as a safety pick. And that's what it's going to be. So. All right. 
That's actually very conservative for Faker. I'm surprised. This is his only champion he's lost on this season. But his most played champion of all time professionally. Yes, that's right. He played it a lot very early on in his career, but hasn't really played it that much for the past year or more. Uh, but it looks like he's having a little bit of a return to it right now. Well, Faker's Oriana is what ended up inspiring Gank by Mom to become such a good Oriana player when he first entered the pro scene. Yeah. Faker's Oriana is a pretty, pretty legendary pick historically in Korea. Yeah, didn't look so great on it, of course, of that one loss earlier this no. season. And you know, honestly, right here, there's not a lot of synergy for the ball uh, because Evelyn's going to be coming in from a flank most of the time. You don't have that ability to track her with the ball as she goes in for the big ults, but maybe you're fast enough that you can make it work here, and we'll see how they can do. KT, on the other hand, really like their composition. Powerful comp that they will probably be able to protect quite easily with the Janna and the Maokai, and SKT. It's going to come down to how well Bengi can engage. He has to have a good engage. Otherwise, KT will have a very easy time peeling. Yeah, Bengi has looked fairly solid on that Evelyn so far, but it really looks like this is going to be kind of his biggest challenge, I think, with this champion. I'm sure Faker would be pretty happy to get a Shockwave on top of that Equalizer, though, from Mar, and we'll see if they can do it. KT versus SKT. The Telecom War continues. Time to get in the game and see who takes it. And welcome to Summoner's Rift. KT Rolster versus SK Telecom T1. And the longest standing rivalry, the best rivalry in Korean esports continues. <laughs> Time for the epic memes. I guess so. SKT fighting. Yep. All right, so Becky's going to lead the invasion right here. Score is... Oh, boy. Oh, they can't see him, nope, which is pretty pretty nice for Bengi right now. Oh, boy, they're walking right into it. Wolf takes a lot of damage. This could be bad. Command Protect used by Faker to try to keep him alive. Flame Spitter used by Marin, and they're able to do enough to push KT back. Ooh, that was a that was a bit of a bold face check right there. Yeah, flash used by Wolf. Uh, I mean, you don't expect five people to be stacked up right there if you're SK Telecom, but at the same time, Faker could have tried to like check that with the ball or something. At the very least, they they tried to be cautious by having Bengi go in first. But I mean, he took command protect because he needed to save Wolf. But yeah, I. Yeah. No. But you have so many line skill shots from KT uh, that, like with the Victor, you just, that amount of damage that you could take early on from a surprise is, it can be pretty devastating. Well, it doesn't end up with too much loss right there. Obviously, Wolf is going to be tanky enough, and the fact that he's laning against Vayne Janna isn't going to scare him. He doesn't have a lot of kill pressure. So I doubt really anything's going to come of that unless Score tries to force something early. Yeah, he may be tempted to now with that flash down on Nautilus. It's a pretty immobile target. Yeah, I'm sure he would be quite happy to get a kill, but oh. he is starting on the red side of the map. While well, Fixer is just going to come in here and harass a little bit, that's quite annoying. Yeah, looks like the blue buff still is going to ta get taken by Banky without too much issue. Wow, Fixer in trouble now. Wolf coming in as well. They got the stun on him. Looks like they might be able to force the summoner. Fixer trying to get to the wall. A little bit more damage will do it. And first blood goes to Marin. Fixer not quite getting close enough to flash over that wall, and even if he had, Bang was all over him. Better to just save the summon summoners and give up that first blood, but that is not the start that KT wanted. No, well, definitely not, and I'm, I'm a little confused about the invade right there because he could see everything on the map, and Sivir's going to have the lane pressure early on in this matchup yeah. um, just because she has that better wave clear, I mean, right from level one. So for Fixer just to walk in there and invade the other side is a questionable decision. Certainly overly bold, trying to be a hero there. Faker, something about being Faker's friend, I don't know. If I had, like I said, if I had like five minutes with each sign, maybe not even that long, a couple minutes with each sign, I could tell you what it said. That's too fast for me. Now Bengi gets his red buff. And look at the win rates between these two. Someday having that slightly higher one on Maokai, but Marin has been a, a great force on Marin all season long and uh, all career long, really. 
Yeah, I was saying that Marin's performance on Marin has been pretty good for his entire career. Marin is career. the best Marin I've ever seen. <laughs> it really, really is. I'm just so hyped. I just, I can't be bothered to really try to read stats or remember what champion names are. So I, I'm pretty hyped too, although I am a little less hype after watching Fixer walk into the, the jungle like that. Well, I'm, I'm, if we can be realistic for a second, because that doesn't happen very often. Oh, well, Marin in a little bit of trouble. Realistically, he could die right here. He's going to try to flash away, score, and someday chasing. And Marin makes it out. Not enough vision in the jungle. But realistically speaking, SK Telecom certainly does come into this with the edge. You'd expect them to win fairly handily. Yeah, and you know, Marin with that early kill, too. KT really wanted to get an advantage in this top lane because, of course, the Maokai into Rek'Sai gank just with that targeted CC from Maokai does make for a lot of crowd control, and it's it's an easy lane to get kills in, especially against Marin. But now that he has that control, he was able to go back and nearly complete his haunting guys right off the bat with the first blood. Yeah. Makes things more challenging for sure. You know, I was seeing on social media today, I was tweeting things like that. People were like, oh, why is it such a big deal? SKT is obviously so much better. But you have to keep in mind, last summer, KT beat SK Telecom. SKT wasn't better than them last summer. And the summer before that, SK Telecom barely, barely beat the KT Bullets in a game five. So it's not like it's been one-sided. Benki coming in for gank and bot lane forces that flash. Yeah, they, yeah this they rivalry is not as one-sided as people pretend it is, you know? No, no, it definitely has been very back and forth over the history of League of Legends. And yeah. I mean, there's big implications too, because that finals win prevented KT Bullets from going to the World Championship that year. And I would say from winning Worlds, uh, honestly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, yeah. you have to look at both of those teams that were clearly the best two teams in Korea at the time. And SKT, uh, by denying KT the right to go to Worlds, maybe prevented them from winning the World Championship outright. Yeah. So this is a it's very interesting, and then not to mention the history throughout many, many games. Oh, and yeah. War. And here oh, we go again. Flash on to Mara. No flash this time, and that's going to be an easy gank for someday. And score, and good of score to come back up to that top lane. Marin was pushed a little bit ahead again. Couldn't get away in time. Well, they, they had to use the flash from someday, but well, well worth it to get the kill and equalize things in the top side. And that's what you want to see in this Maokai versus Rumble matchup is those early kills, especially with the Rek'Sai in the jungle. So Marin, you know, in this matchup, you could kind of expect to die early on. It's not, it's kind of something you just have to put up with, uh, but at least you know where the jungler is going to be targeting. And the fact that Marin still got that first blood is the major, major factor right here. Also, Nugget having a, a really hard time farming versus Faker, Faker in the mid lane so far. Well, when we've gotten a couple glimpses of that mid lane battle, Faker has been doing such a great job of using command attack right into command protect to make sure that he can always trade up, right? He's always able to get a little bit more damage and then soak the autos, soak the abilities from Nagne with that shield. MIA pings coming in the mid lane. Now Wolf is there also. They know where Score is. Score's gonna see him with the Tremor Sense, so that is going to put the kibosh on this gank right now. Faker just gonna walk back in the lane. Has his level six. And remember, Faker's running Ignite here, while Nagne running two movement summoners with Flash and Ghost. So looking for that positioning, which he'll need. But again, if we just talk about the team fight and the way this is going to shake out, Bengi has to get a good flank off because if he fails the flank, it's going to be very easy to, for KT just to kite, and there's not any more engage after that. Sure, they have a several. Sure, they have a Nautilus ult, but these are things you can kite out of, especially when you have a Monsoon yeah. from Janna. So the burden of playmaking here is really on KT, and in particular, Bengi, to get that engage because if KT realizes they could just back off, and blow a couple ultimates, like Chaos Storm and, and Monsoon to zone off SK Telecom, there's not a way that SKT could really get in there. It seems like SK Telecom really needs to put a priority then on objective control, you know, make KT have to come to them in another fight. Marin drops that equalizer, Bengi coming in for a little bit of top lane revenge, and someday without the flash is going to go down. Bengi has the flash to pick it up. They do get the kill. So, more action up in top lane. Yep, Someday had the cowl. Couple long swords, of course, on Bengi's Evelyn means that he just couldn't quite survive that, especially considering that his flash was down. So they trade kill for a kill. 
Yeah. After they know someday used his to go ahead, Bernard equalized that just a hair. And, you know, they didn't have very good vision on Bengi so far this game. Not that many wards of the camps to really track Evelyn's progress. No pink ward in the lane. And that means someday's going to pay for it. Yeah, and Bengi should have that warrior enchant uh, pretty quick, too. And that's going to mean even more damage, even more potent ganks coming in. Well, score has to be Evelyn. more active about getting some wards in to watch Evelyn's progress on the on the camps so that his allies have a better sense of where she is on the map. And they wanted this 2v2, and Arrow is a player that's not really known for his ability to farm in lane. And to have him farm on Vayne in a 2v2 matchup, he's not OQ. You know, he's not <laughs> going to be able to really yeah. stay even in terms of CS, and we're seeing that here. He's already down by a dozen. Well, this is why it's so important to keep that Sivir away from Arrow, because he does have a weaker laning phase, and he does really rely on just being able to ult and then come in and clean up, clean up team fights. And on a champion like Vayne, it's almost the opposite. You have to make plays. You have to be very active in lane, fighting for that CS, you know? Uh, he's he's reasonably afraid as well. I mean, that, that board's nearly dead. And oh, hello. He's going to see Bengi right there and Faker, but he's not going to get any gold from killing it. Yep. Now, will Dragon become a priority pretty soon? It looks like it's starting to. Both teams trying to fight for a bit of vision around the Dragon Pit. Faker coming down. They've kind of chased Bengi and Wolf out of lane here. Meanwhile, the top lane battle continues pretty even up between these two, except one more assist for Marin and a little bit of a basic, basically even CS. Yeah, that, that top gank really helped even the CS because the wave was pushing in towards Someday as well. So they not only got a kill, but they denied him the wave also, which was the equalizer up in the top side. I mean, KT slowly falling behind by oh, about 1,000 gold. I think he's right there. Does Arrow know about this? Maybe they spotted him coming in with that ward. No, I don't think they spotted him coming in. I think Arrow's just having to play back, having to play ultra safe. With all this pressure, though, do you think SKT can maybe make, an, make a dragon attempt coming out of this? Faker's pushing up mid as well, too. But here comes Score. Score trying to make a gank here. Faker gets dropped on by that Chaos Storm. Nice flash in. Gets the kill on the Nogne. So at least trading 1-1. One, one. Marin going to teleport down and do some damage to Score as well. Faker, wow, responding so fast to that gank and at least making it a 1v1. Yeah, he one picks one. up the kill, and that's what Faker's good at, is yep. he turned that kill right there. He forced Score to show on the map, and they lost the TP as Marin comes in, but Marin really wasn't needed right there just to go for the 1v1 in the mid lane, and he got the kill. Nogne did not. Score was the one to pick up the actual goal off of that. So it actually works out in SKT's favor, as long as KT doesn't make a play right now with Someday on the map. So that's what KT has to look to do. They need to trade that one for one for a dragon. We're gonna see him start to move in that direction. See if they're gonna put it out. Good deep wards in as a response to Faker's death also. So they do get a vision advantage compared to SKT. Yeah, it will be a little bit tougher for SK Telecom to go for that dragon now. Maybe gank bottom lane. And Faker getting pretty close to that Athens, though. I would imagine Nogne's probably got some pretty serious gold to go back and spend as well Here at this point. Here comes the dive. Yep, they're going to try it. Marin coming in. He has doesn't have equalizer, though. Nogne zoning with that gravity field. Oh, Faker pulls him back in with the shockwave. Nice off from Pixar, but it's not quite enough. Whirlwind comes through. Nogne or Marin right now might be in a bit of trouble. They take out Wolf. Good equalizer that may save Marin. Faker coming in for another command attack. Throws out the command protect to try to keep Marin up to do all that damage with the flame spitter. Faker, can the autos be enough? Not quite. And they tried so hard. Faker not quite able to finish off someday still. And here comes Arrow. Bengi, meanwhile, getting very low in the river as well. And KT turns it around. Arrow grabs that kill. A little bit of an overextension by SK Telecom. They thought Marin could get the damage done, but didn't happen. Wow, what a beautiful team fight from KT though. Someday using his passive, the Jana shield. Fixer comes in for the flash monsoon to keep Nogne up a little bit longer score.
tries to tie Marin up. Wolf dies nearly instantly. Someday with the TP down to the turret. And now, look at this battle right now. He's got the magic resist, so he's confident in going into this 1v2 against two magic users. There you go. There's a passive proc. Someday wow. just coming in, Eye of the Storm. Summoner heal for the save. Arrow makes it in time and then score, gets underneath Faker with his flash, and that's the finisher from the vein as score streaks up from the bottom side of the map. Just great, great skirmishing and a good punish on SKT's greedy dive. Fantastic team fight, and that does even up the gold more or less between these two teams right now. With no dragons and no turrets, this one's about as close as it gets. That was really fun to watch, actually. Yeah, yeah. SKT made a bold play that was punished, but it looked like Faker was going to get out there. It looks like it looked like maybe they were actually going to be able to trade evenly, but KT did a great job of turning it on its head. Everything from Fixer's play to Someday's just barely holding on. I love well, how confident Someday is in his abilities. The auto attack that would have killed Someday was in the air as the Janus Shield came down onto him. So this really is about as close as it gets. SK Telecom though responding with the dragon, and they will at least be able to take that. So. Good comeback for SKT, making use of KT having to back off for a moment after that fight. Yeah, Marin goes into the mid lane as well, just to just to cover right there, make sure they have the pressure. Well, neither top laner has the TP, and that, that means KT has to give it up. But KT, they have the better scaling here. Uh, if we look at it pretty much across the board, obviously an age is going to do a lot of work, and here uh -oh. we go. Marin could be in trouble, chilling smite used. He drops that equalizer, but he's taking so much damage, scoring someday. Able to do a lot, Marin trying to get away, and he can he make it? Oh, someday missed the arcane smash, but there it is still, the kill coming in. I believe that was actually Prey Seeker yeah. from Rek'Sai, but either way, they get the kill onto Marin. Yeah, lands a sapling on his dome, and yep. then takes out Marin for the kill. It is a clever gank from score. You don't expect a lane gank coming in while someday's walking back from proxying a little bit right there, so Scores. that was a bit surprising from Marin, especially when he had that equalizer up and he thought that maybe he could get it down. But I mean, we talk about scaling in this game. Aegis of the Legion going to do a lot of work against SKT's composition. And once once the MR really comes in, they don't really have an answer to kill Maokai. There's not really anybody on their team that's going to be able to efficiently kill them. If Sivir gets that close to Maokai, she's going to get knocked around quite a bit. Yeah, you're not going to have a lot of time to sit there and auto attack when Maokai is Arcane smashing and twisted advancing. Okay. Twistedly advancing. Yeah, it's so SKT, they need to take advantage of the of their opportunities now. And now they're behind in gold after the trade for the turret right there. Score just gives up on the dragon and instead heads up top for a quick punish. Both of these teams are playing very well this game. Yeah, I think SKT, it, it seems like they would need to identify that dragon is going to be kind of the priority, right? Yeah. I. I mean, obviously, Orianna is going to be very powerful as well, and there's a lot of outplay potential from SKT's composition. Sure. But that that said, if you just pound for pound, KT hits harder in the late game. And we'll see what the state of things are when that happens. Looks like Bang's going to be able to take this bottom turret. Arrow with not enough health to really go 1v1, and now SKT engaging. There's a teleport coming in from Marin. Fixer pops that ultimate early. Alt used on Fixer, actually. Someday teleporting down as well. SKT grouped up in that tri brush. Bengi goes down. Marin in a lot of trouble as well. And KT turning it around. They've got so much damage coming out of Arrow and the double kill from Nage. Nice condemn on Bang. Bang flashing over the wall, though. But now Faker in trouble. Shockwave dodged by Someday as he twists it, advances in. And Faker not quite able to kill it. No, he did get the kill. On to Arrow. Now Someday on his own. Bang trying to kite away. He's got the double buffs. Wolf, can he slow him down enough? Not quite. And now Wolf has to run back under his turret. Even at low health, he can't fight Someday like that. Wow. It's so beginning already. That was like a four for four trade that yeah. happened in that bottom lane. Marin with the faster TP. But someday right there. So let's take a look at how this gets set up. I mean, they go in because they have a ward right there to TP to. Fixer's going to try and flash over the wall, but unfortunately he's going to die to the burn after that. Now Arrow just firing from the side. He gets a lot of free auto attacks off, and everyone just collecting into the choke for Nagde and his Chaos Storm. But look at this. Bang going to flash over, uses his summoner heal. Now they chase into the choke. Shockwave still up, so Nagde takes a bunch of damage from Boomerang Blade and from the Ricochet. And Bang trying to kite this one out, but Someday is pretty strong at this stage. He is 
four, one, and five now. And so he finishes it up, and then this is not enough damage to kill anybody else from the support in the top laner, so a very bloody affair, but somehow SKT gets back into the lead with the dust settles. Yeah. And we'll see what happens when this next dragon comes up in a few minutes yet. SK Telecom still tied in turrets. The big problem is someday is 4, 1, and 5 on Maokai against a composition that is going to have a super hard time killing him. Marin is going for the Void Staff now because he has to, do, he has to be able to deal damage to someday, otherwise they're pretty screwed. Yep, pretty much. It will help him take everybody out really, uh, everybody else out very quickly. And if SK Telecom is able to blow up Nagne, able to blow up Arrow, then it doesn't matter how tanky someday is because he can't do enough damage to clean up a team fight, right? So yeah, he's gonna be near unkillable, but if they can get everybody else, doesn't matter a whole lot. My, my question still remains, whether Bengi can get that flank. It is so important to the outcome of the, these team fights because, oh, uh oh Action down in bot lane, or middle lane rather. Fixer in big trouble, easy kill there. Meanwhile, Marin has to flash away, nearly dying to Vayne Rek'Sai. SKT responds by taking this mid lane turret. Man, so much going on in such a short amount of time in this game. Fixer's been caught out a lot this game on Jana. He seems to be overestimating how much he can do in these little situations. It does seem that way, doesn't it? Um, and he just gets jumped on and dies. So dying three times on Jana is kind of hard when you have Monsoon. And looks like SKT not gonna get too greedy. They did end up taking two towers for one right there, top and mid outers. Oop. And they have one turret left it is very low hp and someday wants to take it out right now he's going to try and just stand in front of this minion wave and push 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 shouldn't have too much of a problem doing that well with nagne coming back into lane now uh, i don't know if they're going to be able to get this one it's going to be he's there oh he's able to do a decent amount of damage enough to scare someday away anyway well someday doesn't have any armor yet so yeah. he has to be a little bit careful of bengi and that warrior enchant does have a, a, a substantial amount of hp but he just he has to be very careful about his target selection in some of these team fights. Right. Oh, blue buff going to Faker. Score tried to get in there and get himself in range to steal it. Dragon back up again. And will KT be able to take this one and equalize it? They've got position now, and they're going to go ahead and start it. SK Telecom, they've got their alts. Will they engage? All right, looks like the Dragon's gonna go to KT, but what's the follow-up gonna but be? At what cost? Oh, SK Telecom, Condemn, Wolf has to get out. The Equalizer used defensively, Someday getting in the back lines. Marn just getting destroyed by Nagne, very low. Someday, though, low health himself, manages to barely make it out, though. Ooh, close calls for both top laners. So the shield from Janna actually saving him right there, but SKT wants this tier two in the mid lane. They're gonna charge down mid. Yeah, without Marin, or without Someday to worry about, rather, they can do a little bit of damage, but it's just not enough. Man, such a close game. Yeah, incredibly close so far, and Marin right there, not the best equalizer. He has to hit that, and again, notice, we don't see Bengi moving for that flank, and that means that they can't properly engage on KT, so they have to throw out things like the equalizer uh, to see if they can actually lock somebody down with that slow, but it just doesn't work that effectively. Yeah, Bengi's, Bengi's Evelyn has not been a big impact. Oh, Nagne grabbed by that shockwave, but where's the follow-up? Bang trying to get in there someday, once again low, still lacking that armor. Faker trying to chase. Oh, Arrow gets caught, and another kill for SK Telecom. Faker going deep now, gonna pick one up on the Fixer, and Nagne still getting chased, getting burned down by that Ignite. Oh, it's a lot of damage, and Bengi flashes for the kill there. And now SKT finds the opportunities, maybe going for this Baron. The pings are happening, and it looks like they're going to take it out. Yeah, a really critical error where SKT yep. was able to use the Civarol just to very efficiently catch up. And Marin had the teleport to actually turn that team fight around. That will be a Baron for SKT. Whoa. There it is. SKT, man, really capitalizing on the opportunity given them. And now 6,000 gold ahead. They've got the Baron buff. What do they do with it? Yeah, they're going to try and just grab the blue, get out. They need to recall and use some of this gold. They got a lot of gold right there that remains unspent. So turn this gold lead into real items. So let's take a look at this. They got really too greedy, and Faker catches Nogne out with the shockwave right there. Bengi with the initiation with the Evelyn ult, and then Arrow just has no mana stance, no chance. He can't flee from the Sivir ult. 
And that's gonna just about do it right there. Yep. Boomerang blade and then Bengi flashing in for the hate spikes. That mid lane turret has 52 hit points left. It's still up. That was a pretty big punishment for just trying to kill the mid tower right there. You have to be careful after 20 minutes. It's you just have to play steadily. You're you're in an even position with the enemy team. That 1,000 gold not going to mean a whole lot right now. And you're going to get it eventually. Eventually, there's going to be a minion wave that hits that tower for two seconds, takes it out, and you're going to be OK. Sure. But over committing to that, when they have a composition that can engage on you, Bengi didn't get the flank right there, but when you're pushed that far forward, he very well could have. Well, I mean, if you if you look at Arrow, too, in that fight, just really out in the open, he's he's certainly looking a bit awkward on this vein. Yep. The Sivir takeaway really showing its importance from SK Telecom. Someday, still incredibly tanky, however. Yeah. Still, though, no armor. So he's still vulnerable to Bengi's still vulnerable to Bang. And we've seen him lose his health just as fast as anybody in some of these fights. He's yeah. fighting the wrong people. Ooh, Faker brings a Nogne. There's Equalizer going down. Nogne able to dodge. It gets a little bit of a heal from Fixer, but it's all about taking this Tier 2 turret. And SK Telecom, even with that Janna shield, is going to be able to do that. That's uh, powering right through anyway. Yep, getting uh, one turret out of that Baron buff, and they are going to move over to top lane now. And will they be able to take another one? Now they have to deal with someday. Faker zoning with the ball. Shockwave is down right now. So is Equalizer, so SKT needs to be a bit careful here. They are short on ultimates. The Cannon Minion, though, doing a lot of damage to that Tier 2. Yeah, the problem is KT has to use Maokai for the engage. And Maokai, yeah. oh, they're going to oh, go. He's going to try it anyway. Righteous Glory pop, but SKT immediately just falls back with that Sivir ultimate. And just recalling, yeah. Bang lost about half his health to a, a death laser from Nogne as well, too. So without the ults, not a fight SK Telecom wants to take. And they can just back off and be happy that they did, uh, you know, half of the health it's worth of damage to that turret. And that's the thing is KT is very reliant on Someday for Engage right here. And yes, they have a composition that's great at kiting and wants to kite. Oh, Marin gets caught out, actually. Well, he's got his flash, but Bengi coming in as well, too. Marin flashing over the wall. Bengi fast enough to escape. So a summoner used, but better than losing Marin a minute before Dragon comes up. Uh, he's still chunked out. He's going to have to go back. And that's one less person that they have on Dragon warding duty right now. And again, like KT, they're great at kiting. But when you could just pop the Sivirult and kite them out when you're trying to oh, see. Oh, Arrow chasing. Bengi's right there. He's going to drop the ult onto him. Smite as well. But no follow-up. Now Bengi in trouble. Wow, Arrow able to get a lot of damage in with those auto attacks. SKT on the run. This dragon is, okay. might as well be KT. Someday teleporting in. Going to jump right onto Bengi. Bang, able to respond with a lot of damage. Bengi still alive because of that command protect. Here comes Marin. The great equalizer comes down. Someday separated from the rest of his team. Shockwave pulls in Nogne again. Arrow pops that heal, stays alive. And Fixer able to get a nice health, bringing back the health of some of those members of KT. Arrow slowly trying to escape. But Faker, oh, Wolf manages to grab him, and there's a nice pick on to Arrow from SK Telecom. Somehow, someway, SKT turning that fight around. Bengi lived because of the command protect from Faker. Now, you had to go for that fight if you're KT. That's the way you're going to get back into the game. You had such an advantage. You knew Morin wasn't at full HP. Bengi was there, and you had nearly killed him. It was absolutely correct, the call for someday to go in and to try and clean that one up so that you can get back in the game. Unfortunately, Nagde wasn't there. Uh, and when he was there, Faker just immediately just took him out of that team fight with an instant shockwave. And that was very well done in terms of zoning and in terms of saving Bengi from what looked like certain death yeah. in this game. And perhaps the start of a comeback now has been entirely shut down. Well, Faker's, Faker's really had Nagne's number all game long. He's been able yep. to not necessarily blow up Nagne and kill him, but he's been able to keep him out of the fight in such a big way. He was able to save Bengi last fight. So Faker, while he's 4-3-5, and five, not the most impressive stat line on this Ariana, he's really made a huge difference in this game. Well, if you look how he started, he was 2-3-3 three, and three not too long ago. So he's actually turning this game around a little bit in terms of the score. Yeah. And it's making a big difference. But like you're saying, the ability for him to stop Nogne from doing pretty much anything 
has been massive. And true enough, uh, a grab on the score gets knocked up immediately. Wolf has that command protect, though. Bengi trying to come in from the side. They ult onto Nagne. They just really want to kill this tier two, and they will. Wolf's so tanky that he's able to really take a lot of abilities from KT, and they get out with the objective. But look at this. As KT knows that without that TP down, all they have to do, they can play aggressively around the turret. Wolf can take some damage. Yeah. Because Bang will just pop his ult and walk away after the turret's dead. Take the objective, go for that, commit to that. The Sivir ult's on a low enough cooldown that it doesn't really matter. So just great priority and great use of this composition from SKT, knowing that there isn't that engaged threat as long as the Maokai isn't there. Yeah, and you can really see KT struggle a bit without that Sivir. As a team, they've relied on it perhaps a, a bit too much this season. Uh, I mean, Arrow, Arrow's gotten some nice chunks on, on the other members of, of SKT. He seems to know when to go in, but... He's not having a bad game, but just overall, strategically, they, they look like they can't be, well, literally can't be quite as agile as they usually are. Yeah, they just don't, they need to just... The problem with their composition is that they fell so far behind that they, they're they in a position where they have to engage, and SKT got an early Baron. And so, because they don't have the strongest engage with this composition without a teleport from Maokai, they have to play defensively, therefore they can't engage. Now, if this was the late game, and we were seeing a pretty even a pretty even game, and KT was playing Dragon and Baron, and forcing SKT into them, their kite would be very problematic for SKT to deal with. So this is more a function of the lead of the game, and the fact that KT is tr has to play their comp differently than they would like under these circumstances. SKT may just be going for another Baron here. They've got wards. They can bait it. Marin can split push. He's got that teleport. So the pressure on the bot lane is real. And SKT kind of milling around by the river here. We'll see. They try to set up a pick. Do a little bit of damage to Fixers. Silver ult used. Wow, they're going to go in. Shockwave brings oh an arrow, my. blows him up. What a play from Faker. Someday gets in the back lines, but again, when it's only someday, that tanky Maokai is not a threat. A double kill for Faker, and they can easily turn around for this Baron. They can probably take the inhibitor too if they want. Baron is the safer play, though, and that's the way they're going to go. And Faker just is so irrepressible. You try to keep him down in the laning phase. Maybe he has a rougher early game. But by the end, he knows his limits on these champions so well. And just the combination there, popping the Sivirol, getting in range, and then his confident use of the Shockwave to make the pit, pick on the Arrow, who looked like he was out of range to me. Let's take a look at that one again. It was pretty close. Arrow tried to get there, and tumbled out just at the I very mean, edge. That was just Faker 100 to zeroing him right there, yeah. knowing how much damage he could do with his build. That is that is crazy to me that he could know that. Well, it's his most played champion for a reason. I mean, there was follow-up coming, but I didn't know Orianna could one-shot a vein like that this early into the game. He's got a lot of items, though. I, I believe he had that second needlessly large rod before the fight. I could be wrong, but he at least had the Void Staff he, he and the had, Death Cap. Yeah, yeah. He had three core items before that. I didn't see whether he had that other needlessly large rod or not. That's what I'm wondering, too. Either way, looks like it was enough. <laughs> it was. Impressive, yeah. regardless. And great teamwork as well. Everyone knowing that they had caught them out right there, that they were going to be able to lock that down. Yep. And now they've got that Baron buff. Now they can put even more pressure on these lanes. Hard to, hard to imagine SK Telecom not coming out of this Baron buff with an in inhibitor. Good wave clear, though, from KT via Victor, but seems like uh, split pushing. Yeah, the death Maybe rate. the way to go. The death rate just isn't enough right now, though. I mean, if we just look at Victor's items, he actually doesn't have that much AP. Well, what we need is a banner of command, man. That'd make it tough. That would make it Equalizer. very tough. SKT really wants this turret, committing that ult from Rumble to it. Not able to get a whole lot of damage to the turret done yet, though. I think he's just going to go ahead and tank that with the command protect a little bit. So can you start some sort of split push, perhaps? Uh, Who do you do it with? No, it's not, not really easy no, with SKT. No, no. You do, I would not do that. I would just stick together right now. They can just take the, the dragon when it comes up again in 45 seconds. See everybody backing off and getting ready for it. Yeah, go back and buy at the moment. See what else you could do. Maybe Bang will be able to do 
afford a last whisper soon, and that's going to put you over the top now that someday has that frozen heart. He's looking for a little bit more farm, it would seem. Yeah, sure enough. And yeah, hold off on anything else right now because you don't want to dive this composition because you will get wrecked by a gravity field and by Maokai holding you under the tower. So the safe thing to do is just to play around, try and get picks with the Sivir and your long range engage with the equalizer. Yeah. And it's like we talked about earlier, you know, I mean, KT wants to try to kite, but SK Telecom, now that they've gotten control over most of the map, they can say, hey, you come to us. Otherwise, we're going to get these five dragon sacks. We're going to get every Baron from here on out. And that puts KT in a really awkward spot. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's a decent way to, to play this out. You have the Sivir for the short range. You're worried if, if Sivir walks up to a turret that you're going to get cut off, you're going to get caught out. Um, and if you lose one member like Sivir, Arrow will be able to clean up. He's playing Vayne. He's, even if he's behind, the power still is there in that champion selection. He's still got certainly enough items to do a ton of damage if he gets loose. And the team pretty squishy from SKT as well. Yeah, very true. You have to really respect Faker's use of command protect, specifically this game. He's been able to really mitigate a lot of the damage that KT has been trying to bring in. It's been impressive. But yeah, I think this siege is going to take a while for SKT. This might be a this might be a five dragon closeout game, huh? Well, not gonna, yeah, it might be. Uh, Nagne here, he just doesn't have enough AP yet. It, his build, he lacks any of the 120 AP items at this stage. Going for the Lich Bane right now, but I think he just needs to stack AP to just be a wave clear machine at the moment because that's the big problem that he's been having. You think so? Well, Bengi gets completely caught, drops that ultimate, has to flash over the wall. Manages to live, but playing things a little bit risky there. Score helping spot him. Yeah, just trying to get some wards down. Uh, make sure that Marin was safe to be split pushing on that turret. Yeah. Baker's got his Zonias now. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, he has quite a bit, quite a bit of AP at this point. Two needlessly large rod items and that void staff completed. He's going to be feeling pretty good about any fights that he'll get into later in this game. Yeah. And now that he's got that Zonia's Hourglass too, he can be just even more aggressive about the way he plays these team fights out. Looks like they're going to go for this top lane tier two. It doesn't have much health remaining, so you would think SKT might be able to find an angle. Baron up in about a minute 45, though, so maybe that's going to be the priority here. And again, it's a situation where SKT is like, all right, all right, KT, come get us. Yeah, absolutely. They ha they are controlling this game. They have that vision control over the top side jungle. They're dictating the pace. They just don't want to dive. Oh, several so activated. They think they may have a pick on to someday here. Bengi there as well. Get the slow with the ultimate someday. Pops that Righteous Glory. Getting very low, though. Gets taken out despite Fixer's ultimate. They take the turn as well. Nice dredge line from Wolf to grab Fixer. He's going to get taken down by Faker. And with two people out of the way, SKT should be free and clear for another Baron. Well, Bengi needs to be careful. Getting really chunked down by that Chaos Storm. Baker still has Shockwave, so they can continue this assault for a while. Yeah, they can. With two people out of the way, you might as well go for this inhibitor, too, I suppose. Yeah, just keep on rolling right through here. Bang's taking a little Whoa. bit more turret damage than you'd like, but there you go. Hey, it works, and they will be able to get this inhibitor. Faker just chasing score away. Wow. And SKT is doing so much with so little. I mean, it's been a slow closeout this game, but Wolf has a frozen heart at this point, so this Nautilus is actually pretty darn wealthy yeah. for a support. And now Marin looks like he'll be working his way to his Zonia's Hourglass, probably a good idea at this late stage of the game. And uh, SKT just using the Sivir to make those picks. They're very decisive. I thought it, they were crazy to go for a pick on a Maokai, but it actually worked. They had enough damage. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty amazing because now he does have that armor too. It's surprising how fast he goes down, but I suppose anybody goes down fast 5v1, you know? 
Uh, also there, 15K gold behind, or 15, yeah. Uh, so that does when help. we look at Bang right now, he's 110 CS up on his opponent, and he's a six item Sivir. So he, They've even with there. even with a frozen heart, you know, there's only one armor item. There's no thorn mail on Sunday yet. So he's not really yeah. equipped to deal with. I mean, SKT has all the, the penetration stats as well, too. So they can burn through a lot of those resistances from Sunday, and they can burn through this, this Baron very quickly as well. There it goes, KT getting a little bit too close there. They might pay for a Knight's dredge line on to Arrow. Gets taken out by Bang and the rest of SK Telecom someday again. Separated from his team, Faker gets exhausted. That's not really going to do a whole lot. Score goes down, Marin claims a kill, and Faker manages to catch Fixer with that shockwave. Why not burn it right there? Nothing else to really use it on as you get four kills already. And with only someday remaining, SKT looking to close this one out. Well, someday did his best this he game. Tried. Uh, he started out 4-1-5 and five on this Maokai, being an absolute force early, but SKT is so, just a team that can punish you so hard. How did they win this game? It was because KT slightly overcommitted to that turret, and yep. then from there, Baron, no more chance of them getting back in. It's getting a little bit, a tiny bit overeager in the mid lane, and that is all SK Telecom needed to snowball a quick victory here in game number one, GG. It's crazy to me how punishing SK Telecom's play has been in the last couple of weeks. If we think back to that Master Yi game against CJ, that was like a slight blue buff delay that Wolf caused, yeah. that caused that game to snowball out of control. This time, KT was really doing a good job of playing, playing the game, hanging in there in the early game, countering SKT's early moves. But as soon as they overcommitted to that turret, lost three players, Baron was taken, and then SKT just snowballed the win from there. Well, the way that SK Telecom finds cracks in the armor of other teams and then just blows it wide open, it, it really, the way I'm seeing these guys play right now really reminds me of the SK Telecom. Confidence, no doubt, before he has to go into a very tough game against SK Telecom. So there's going to be a Rek'Sai ban from SKT. I wonder if they are setting things up for a Gragas, although Bengi hasn't been like the biggest Gragas player this season. That is very true. Could just be another Evelyn too that they're planning on picking down the line somewhere, you know? Yep, definitely could be. A bit easier Maybe to play when the Rek'Sai is out of the way. Take that Alistar first, but yeah. remember, Score is a big EVE player as well. We've seen a number of Evelyn bans against Score this season. That's true, that's true. Score has had some pretty notable games on that champion. They're gonna ban the Annie against Fixer as well. Hmm. Rise banned, of course, against Mara, and Rise just kind of a must ban in general, as is the Callista most of the time on red side. So Bang, although uh, Bang has been able to play more Callista games than really anybody in the league, not gonna get to play it in the first two games at least tonight. Maybe at all, if this ends up being the last game. We'll see what SK Telecom's final ban is gonna be. And it is the Alistar, so I wonder what they are going to first pick first. wonder if it will be that, uh, that Gragas after all. I think it will be, but this could open up an Echo. Remember, Echo banned yeah. last time by KT. Of course, they would have to blind pick the Echo if they pick it in the mid lane, of Maybe course. Maybe they're going to first pick the Echo. Uh, possibly. Probably the Gragas, though, is, is the intent right here. Yeah. Gragas banned. Now, Maokai is available too, which would be a pretty tempting grab for Marin, and not a bad first pick at all. It does leave the Echo open. What do you value more, though? Rumble open as well. <laughs> I don't think they're going to take the Draven. <laughs> a little bit of trolling uh, coming trolling in from SKT. Trolling arrow. Yeah, I think the Rumble's a good pick too. Yeah, I, SKT really has done well with that Rumble. Marin's played it so much this season, and SKT is able to punish so hard in the early game, but do they go with the Eve? Again, okay, that's going to be the priority, just because that's one of Score's main champions as well. Yeah, it is a takeaway from Score. It's a champion that we obviously have seen Bengi perform well on. Now, SK Tele now uh, KT, rather, they do have the option to take the Sivir, and I think they better grab it in round one. Well, someday, thinking on your screen right now. Maokai Sivir. Coach is behind him with the notebook, so do you take the Nautilus away from Wolf? Fixer didn't look very comfortable on that Janna last game. Found himself caught out of position a few times and yeah. chunked down to start these team fights. But the Echo is still available, and I, someday obviously could be a very big Echo player. I don't know if Edge plays the champion or not. So a big flex pick could come in from KT. If oh. They want it. Well, Blanc's still available, available even though she did get a little bit nerfed here in 5.11. They're just going to go with the Nautilus Sivir, so. 
prioritizing that bot lane and you know, arrow on Sivir obviously has been such a huge part of KT's success. Why not go ahead and grab it in the first round? You know SKT will take it if you don't. So I would imagine it's gonna be Corky for the AD carry, but SKT, what else are they gonna grab? They can still take the rumble. They can still wait for that mid laner. Echo's still available, as is Azir, as are a lot of strong picks for mid lane. Yeah, you take rumble Echo now though, and you completely telegraph your lanes. So oh, yeah. if that's a risk that SK Telecom wants to take, that's one thing, but KT, with the engage that they have already, that Janna may prove more useful. Yeah, I think the Janna is definitely a pretty safe pick. You don't give away a whole lot. The only thing you give away is that, hey, we're gonna stop your hard engage. It's <laughs> about it. Also, there is synergy with the Echo, with the Janna, because basically you can go in with Echo, and Janna can sit there in Monsoon while you get, while you hop back via Chrono Break, kind of like a Zed in out with the Death Mark, mm. uh, which we used to see Najin use a lot with the Janna Zed combination. So there's a pretty good synergy there, I think, between those champions just to keep Echo topped off and so he can re engage once the fight continues. A mid Tristan is not actually a possibility, is it? No. Wouldn't think so. Maybe KT saying, all right, we know we know you're going to go for that Tristana. Perhaps. Perhaps. Possible. Bang has been playing. So Bang right now is number one and number two in Korean solo queue. Wow. And he has been spamming Tristana. So they definitely uh, know that's a possibility. That wow. is a Riven. Riven and Lee Sin. Now, technically, we don't know where that Riven is going yet. It could be mid. It could be top. I don't know if Edge plays it. True. What would you think about a Lucian here as opposed to the the Tristana. So I wonder if we're gonna maybe see the new Jace with this Corky. That wouldn't be a bad comp, would it? No, not at all. Yeah, I think uh, you, you could use Evelyn peel. for disengage. Good poke, yeah. Yeah. Evelyn isn't ideal for disengage, but it's not the worst either. Yeah. We've seen it work. We haven't seen it work really well in a poke comp, but we've seen it work. But do you go with a blind pick Jace is the question. If you're Coco, you, you feel comfortable, you can pull that off. Oh, oh wow. no, no, not again. Oh, oh. no, <laughs> he's doing it again. Master Yi returns to the mid lane for Faker. Well, welcome to Champion's Edge. Really a trial by fire here. He has to play against Faker's Master Yi, okay. I mean, in the last comp, I could total, I could sort of understand it with the Annie and the Morgana that we had that lockdown. Yeah, they don't have the pick potential that they did with that. No, they don't. They have some good poke with Corky and Rumble, but you're gonna have to land a lot of skill shots in order to let Faker's Yi clean up here. What in the world do you take for for Edge now? You'd imagine that Riven is going to going to top, but. I don't know. The train's completely off the rails at this point, man. <laughs> it definitely is. Well, they have the, the Riven. Now, we've seen Riven and only Fizz, actually, okay. the response. Interesting. Huh. Well, though, it will not surprise you that I know nothing about the Fizz Master Yi mid matchup. I, I thought you were a good analyst. <laughs> Faking it the whole time, huh? Well, so the Riven pick in the top lane, every time we've seen Riven this season, it has been against a Rumble. Yeah. Uh, that includes the games that Smev has played and the game that Someday has played. Uh, so it is becoming a popular counter pick in terms of the Riven play, and it really does punish, put a lot of kill pressure in that top side. And you combine that with the Lee Sin, and Marin's going to have to be super careful about how he plays the lane because that 2v2 is deadly. Oh, man. This is going to be a bit nuts. SK Telecom, they want to make it entertaining, if nothing else. Faker taking the Master Yi yet again. They beat CJ Entis in the game two with Faker on Master Yi. But like we mentioned, that was a composition with a lot more pick potential. This time, it's going to rely on, uh, I don't know what it's going to rely on, but it's going to rely on Faker to get a lot of kills with Master Yi. And we have to talk about how that game started, because when CJ picked the Urgot, they had a Rek'Sai. They had... Uh, a Morgana, they had an Annie, they had all these champions collapsing on the mid lane to kill the, the Urgot early and get right. me rolling. They just don't have that same kind of crowd control with this composition. Against the Fizz, it's going to be so tough too with Playful Trickster to get that consistent damage done. Everything on the line now, can SKT close it out with a stylish 2-0 or will we see a tie series? Time to get in the game and find out.
right, well, here we go again. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. KT Rolster versus SK Telecom. And Faker once again with this Master Yi in the mid lane. Got to win with it once, but it's going to be uh, quite a bit more difficult this time around. Yeah, he has no hard CC on his team. Uh, he is going to have to go full Berserker this time. I mean, Not he, talking about the Greaves. Well, well, he might go for the Greaves too. He can split push <laughs> is the thing he can do. Yeah. Uh, but Riven is going to be there to split push also, although Faker will have the advantage of an Ignite. And uh, Edge may be able to deal with him in that way too, just because the Playful Trickster is going to be able to dodge the Alpha, the alpha Strike. Uh, I'm just... Not exactly sure. This composition, last time he played it, that composition relied on the execution of Marin and and and, uh, and Wolf Sani. This time, this composition, I mean, it has no synergy. You know, there's not, there's 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 nothing that you can do. There's no setup that I can imagine besides just poke and let fi hit equalizer. Hit some rockets, get everybody low enough that you just Faker just roll, ults in and kills everybody. That's I, it. That's what you got. I recall a game from last season where Wolf had an amazing roaming pick game on Jana. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe he's yeah. gonna bring this one back well, again, right? SK Telecom would be very <laughs> confident if they felt they could bank on that. Oh. Wolf Whoa, gonna run, run into arrow in the brush, take yep. one auto, but they're gonna get the two v two. Indeed, they will. I'm just curious about this mid lane, man. I just really, really want to see what you do. Now, if you alpha strike a Fizz and he playful tricksters immediately, does it deny some of the damage? I would, yes. That should be the way it works. Oh, yeah. oh Faker already hammering, hammering edge. Yeah. He wants to round that edge. Yeah, Faker gets the level two quickly this game, so. Yep. He's going to have a bit of that advantage. Edge has tons of pots, though, so he's going to be all right. Someday did take the Gromp uh, by himself, the Gromp XP, and then move in to help score on the blue buff. So he's going to hit level two. Marin already there as well. And they will meet up down on the bottom side. So all eyes on Faker right now. What can he do with this Master Yi for his second professional Master Yi mid-game of all time? We're actually saying that. It actually is happening. It's like the most Master Yi we've seen in years. Well, Master Yi is a great janitor. He loves to clean up those team fights, right? He can clean up a big, big old mess and just keep on resetting. But the issue is, is that you, you, as a Master Yi, you are reliant on the rest of your team to make the initial play so you can clean up. It's not, it's not a very proactive champion. I think every champion is a proactive champion when Faker plays it. See if he can make that happen this time around. Bengi getting a little bit low with the Krug, so he is going to go back and buy Faker already with a CS lead in the middle, just looking at that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you expect this early on. Fizz generally has a hard time in laning phase, except against very specific matchups where he can abuse them. Uh, and considering he took so much damage early on, he also has a flask, not a combat item early yeah. so he's going to take a, a little bit of farming and a little bit I of items before he can actually hit some sort of form right here faker coming back into lane with some wards and a long sword yeah you can see faker's really trying to take advantage of the fact that edge is prioritizing just kind of sustain in lane and so he's going to try to make him use it up as fast as he can it's also true that with with Yi, you don't have a lot of control over the wave if you use that alpha strike so yeah. you have to have good vision and Bengi just getting deep wards in right now. You can see the pink starting to appear around that mid lane. They want to get that vision to help out. out. Wolf went down and dropped his pink ward at a choke. And they have to be worried because score and edge with this Lee and Fizz combo could be quite deadly. Yeah, KT has a really good way to get in the back lines onto Bang. A faker waiting until that playful trickster is done. Look at all that damage. Edge trying to bait him a little bit since score is close by, so Faker will have to pull back and meditate a bit. Yeah, still that sustain that the Yi has, quite powerful, and with score showing in mid, that does give Bengi even more of an opportunity just to hunt down. They're gonna dive oh, wow. someday. Yeah, dive on the someday, someday with no way to really get out. And Marin, oh, barely makes it. First oh. blood going to Bengi. 
That was very close, but SKT pushing the limits and coming out on top. Wow, so flash used there by Marin, not used by Someday, interestingly. If he had used that flash, I think maybe he could have done something a little bit more in terms of that dive. Marin goes back for the arm guard, double door played for Someday, but shutting down that Rumble Snowball early, and you can see Marin has that CS lead as well, so Score hasn't been able to get down there to really make a play and get this Riven going. Yeah, I think you just picked up a uh, Null Magic Mantle. I always almost forget the name of that item. Audience thinks it's hilarious. Gonna go for that Hex Drinker early on and that'll certainly help in the Fizz lane as well too. Fiendish Codex picked up by Edge, so he's got that little bit of CDR and finally a little bit of punch to those attacks. Yeah, someday here though, really struggling in a lane that he did just fine with oh, earlier. Faker see, gets fished. I told you it was gonna happen. Here comes a roaming John exhaust use. Oh, Fixer coming to support the lane though. Wolf not quite able to get that whirlwind off. Score was there as well too. Bit bold for Edge. Remember, he just doesn't yeah. have these wards around the mid lane, and he does, certainly didn't have a ward to make that play when the Janna was oh, at my Faker's gonna go in, man. Exa Ignite has not been used yet. Faker gets ulted by Fixer, though. Gotta be careful there, Ignite used. <laughs> Knew the possibility close. existed, though, that Fixer could still be there on that side of the river, and you know what? He has to flash, but doesn't actually die. There's just no fish, no follow-up damage even after the Ignite is used by Fixer to take him down. So playing with fire a little bit, but he doesn't get punished for it. Yep. Oh, well, wouldn't be a Faker game if he's not pushed up in lane and risking death every moment. He likes to live on the edge. He does. He's living on the edge this game, just he, barely. If he was in that Triple X movie, the US government would have recruited him instead of Vin Diesel. <laughs> Oh. I think the movie might have been more entertaining that way. Uh, oh, I don't know. I like oh. the piece of that. Oh, wow. Bengi just walks up and smites it. Can't see it coming, and that'll be a denial from Edge. One more thing going a little bit wrong in this lane score. And Bengi on your screen right now. The battle of smites. Score isn't very good at smiting, though. That's what his teammates say. Well, proven it. <laughs> His teammates are definitely going to say it even more now. Well, he didn't want to spite that one, Noah. He wanted to give it to. <laughs> he wanted to give it to Edge. Could have smote it early, you know. Take it a little bit faster. Here we oh, go. Dive onto Edge. Score is right there, though. I don't know if this is going to work out. Oh, Bengi, Bengi in big trouble. Faker trying to do some damage. Bengi gets taken out by Edge. Oh, Faker kicked kicked into the rafter bit. He's going to Alpha Strike right back over and pop the ignite. Faker with the kill on the edge. Teleport coming down. Marin protecting him and someday cancels that TP. Doesn't come up from the bottom lane. So right there, you see Edge turn it around a little bit. They do trade jungler for jungler. Both mid laners getting a kill. And the attempt to kick him back over the wall to keep that next alpha strike from going down wasn't as successful as perhaps Score would have liked but they will have a TP advantage in a little bit. Bang and Wolf getting aggressive in that top side. Yeah, the 2v2 happening here. Arrow pops that ult, a little bit low. Bang with the Janna shield, trying to survive. Wolf uses the ult, Bang comes back in again. He had to flash. Oh, here comes Marin. They may be able to dive this. Score coming up as well, too. Bengi on the move as well. No, they know what's Gets up. spotted, yeah. yeah they I think know KT what's can up. They're pull pulling back. back right now. They see Evelyn with the pink ward, so they yep. may just have to trade turret for turret. But that's a big commitment at the top side. Four people up on that top tower, and there's no more wave. Arrow has the better wave clear. So actually, SKT overcommitted to this just a little bit. They're going to lose a tower. Well, Faker's going to get the one in mid, it looks like. So they will still be able to trade turret for turret, just not in the way that they may have thought they would have. All right, so this is actually definitely better for SKT based on that last auto attack. Oh, Edge, no turret to protect him, and Faker just goes in. Doesn't have the Ignite, though, so doesn't want to commit too hard to that one. So really coming up with that tower advantage because they got the mid lane. Edge just went back, had to go back at the, at the wrong time, and that gave Faker a free lane. And this Master Yi can clear the wave pretty darn quick. And once he gets on those turrets, 
everybody knows who's played against the Master Yin solo queue that the split push or just this tower pressure can get overwhelming at a very rapid rate. So SKT has a big power spike with this Corky. If they can set up a 4-1 split, now that Faker's Master Yi is a little bit ahead and he can actually get into lane and start causing some more pressure on the turrets while Corky kind of holds it down, they could have a very powerful mid game. Yeah, true enough. Bang and Wolf now down in the bottom lane. Yeah. Now at some point too, does Faker get to a, a state where he hasn't gotten far enough ahead? Uh, there's not really enough tankiness on the KT side is the thing. Like, I suppose. There's not really, Faker's gonna be able to 1v1 anybody if he gets. Oh boy. <laughs> the dive, incoming edge looking for an opportunity to drop that ult. Not finding it though. Yeah, if Faker, Faker is always gonna be confident in 1v1 unless he's very far behind in this game. Uh, so that's that presents a bit of a problem for KT because they don't have that big tank to really lock him down. The crowd control just isn't there for this Master Yi. I mean, the only they've got some hard CC on Fixer, but that's that's about it. Just a very short stun on Riven, kick of course on the score, and the knock up if you can hit the fish from Edge. But Vega's mm -hmm. also going to be moving so fast that it's going to find some of the stuff very easy to dodge. Well, so far so good. Picking up one kill already. A little bit of money to be spent by KT here. Looks like they're getting an opportunity to do that. No one's been able to really go after the dragon just yet either. Faker just kind of letting that mid lane freeze too so he can farm safely. Yeah, Faker with the Hex Drinker first too isn't really equipped to start split pushing yet. He has to get that Blade of the Ruin King because if he gets into a side lane, he's going to be against Riven or against Sivir. Yeah. And so he's he just has to make sure in terms of itemization that he's really in a place to do that. Obviously having him against Someday right now would be great, but not gonna happen. Oh, Edge going in on Faker, that's the from Bengi as well. Teleport coming in for KT though. Faker gets caught with a fish on nice dredge line. Faker trying to go, oh, score kicked him out. Alto comes in and Edge has just enough burn to finish him off. Nice double, double kill for that. And now he's going to get nearly a triple arrow picking that one up, though. And they'll get the mid lane turret. Nice fight by KT. Now they had the TP advantage and they used it so, so well there. Fixer just landing the CC. Equalizer has to uh -oh. go down to prevent <laughs> the loss of a turret, but Marin. Marin gave away his position, though. Yeah, he's going to be able to get out. So they can't take a two towers right there. Very crucial for SKT. Now, KT not that far into the lead as a result of those kills, but that was a very solid play into the mid lane where they got a tower and the necessary carnage to put themselves into the lead. Well, now we've got a situation, too, where Edge has three kills, and this Fizz is going to start to be pretty scary. Yeah. Yes, he is, and especially against somebody like Marin, uh, who doesn't have MR. Let's take a look at how this went down. So, Bengi's here, Edge goes in, playful tricksters, but look how fast this comes in. Great hook by Faker, not so great kick by score, but he does manage to just barely go down in the end. And what a great double kill with the playful trickster right there is all Five members of KT just pile onto the mid lane. And meanwhile, uh, Bengi was able to just solo dragon. So SK Telecom, just like last game, losing a kill or two, but responding with a dragon. And a blue buff. And a blue buff, yeah. So second blue buff denial this game, so. Well, they lose a turret. That is all three outers down now for SKT. So that is certainly a point of concern. Bang has his Trinity Force, though, so. Can't quite kill the turret. He's got to wait for that next wave. and Yeah, he'll get it, though, on the next wave. They've got so many wards yeah, in the bottom jungle that Bang's perfectly safe. Yeah, 100%. He's got Bengi there, too. Yeah. Great play. And that's the thing. We see Bengi start off, try and turn that around. But instead of just committing to it, once he sees everything falling in that mid lane, he'll just go and take the dragon instead. Take what advantage he can. Get those deep wards in so they can secure that turret. And that leaves us with only, wow, Bengi has to flash. Yeah, good flash there. I mean, there was no other way to get out of that without dying. So you have to burn the summoner spell. Faker getting closer to that blade, but still doesn't have it quite yet. Edge not only has more kills, but he's caught up in CS in a big way. 
I'm not sure this Master East is going to work this game, Doha. I mean, KT is a great team, and they certainly can outplay on nearly any composition, but this is a really difficult situation. Oh, Edge going in. A lot of KT members right there. Faker pops that Alpha Strike to try to get out of the fish. He backs away with the Highlander. Bang gets grabbed by the dredge line. Able to do a lot of damage, though. And SKT, Faker looking for those resets. Equalizer slowing people down, and here we go. Bang picks up the kill. Marin doing a lot of damage to the Flame Spitter. And now Faker comes in with the Alpha Strike. There's one, but the kill goes to Bang. Triple kill for him. Arrow getting very, very low. Quadra kill for Bang. But Edge way too far away. They're looking for him, but no, no pentakill for Bang here. So the Corky power spike, he just got that Trinity Force. Yeah. And you can see how much damage he's doing because Arrow doesn't even have that Infinity Edge at this point in time. They're just not equipped to go into this situation at this juncture. You're fighting in the part where, of course, this Rumble is going to be so, so strong naturally as well, especially considering the CS advantage that Marin's managed to get. And now that is nearly a 4K gold lead for SKT. And we were talking about it, but that's where the 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 Yi pick really comes in. That's the way you get ahead with this composition is if you use the quirky AOE or the quirky rockets to poke somebody down and then finish up with the, the Master Yi afterwards. Yeah, kind of ended up being the opposite that fight, but the principles are still the same. You know, one of them gets them low for the other, right? In that fight, Faker was getting everybody low health and Bang got the finishing blows. Could easily go the other way around later in the game. And Faker does have that Blade of the Ruin King now. So here's here's where I would imagine the, spit, the split pushing, spit pushing, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> Split pushing begins, and Faker is kind of heading towards that top lane. Wow, Arrow just gets his Infinity Edge, too, so I wonder how much money he was sitting on right there and if he could have had a better item for that fight. That's a good question. Bang looking very good after that fight, too. Gets the Quadra, and then he gets the Sorcerer's Shoes and also the uh, Cutlass as well. Yep, here comes the Split Push. Here it comes, as expected. Uh, so, is someday going to be able to effectively deal with this? At least they're the same level. Well, someday, not having a, a big item quite yet, just the Brutalizer and the Hex Drinker, really, so. There's been a lot of action, but it, we're still, this game's still pretty early. Yeah, only 18 minutes in. I'm just going to go out there and take some CS while he can. Did have some friends on the bottom side of the map to help him out right there. And Edge actually, he's going for the Zonia second. So really prioritizing that uh, just armor to deal with Faker, but I'm not sure how much help that's going to be. There's a lot of magic damage coming in from SKT as well. Yeah, it really feels like SK Telecom has that momentum now. How far are they going to be able to actually push it? SKT as well has been very good about having wards where they needed to have wards. And they're on a mission to do just that again. Yeah, let's try and take out, clear some vision right there. KT manages to find the pink ward right as its place, but they betray their position just a tad. Yeah. And now look at Bang going into the bottom jungle, putting down some of his own wards as well, letting Marin push up that lane. Yeah, it looks like they're really just trying to pressure all three lanes simultaneously and use the siege that they have with the Trinity Force Corky as best they can right now. Yeah, taking a lot of KT's jungle in the process as well. I guess someday's going to have to deal with this Master Yi. Well, good luck. Yeah, he just doesn't have a lot of sustain yet. Uh, no real lifesteal besides what he's got on the Doran's Blades and the Blade of the Ruin King. Over time, Faker may be able to grind down someday's Riven, but he doesn't have... Oh, Bengi waiting for it. Oh, it didn't quite get it with the Smite that time. Yeah, score came in there with the Resonating Strike Smite Spike Finisher, so Bengi yeah. didn't have a chance to smite it away. Well, Dragon in 10 seconds, so now SK Telecom will see if they group up for that. They have the only Dragon taken so far in the game. Might be able to add a second one on here. Yep, they're all getting ready for it. 
And KT, I don't believe, has the timer for that. So it should be, yeah, because they never saw Bengi take it. Well, so SK Telecom with an you easy dragon. You could always see the dragon being taken because... Oh, yeah, that's true. You uh, can see the buff, right? Yeah, the buff come yeah. up. So you should have, a, within a second or two, the rough timer of it. But in any case, KT really not in a position to fight right now. They don't want to TP in with this Riven. I think you, you absolutely give that one up at this stage. You know you're behind. And... You're hoping that maybe later on you could make a pick with this Sivir that will get you back into this game. And you're also going to be, I suppose, somewhat confident as Corky's damage starts to taper off later that maybe you can do something here. Yeah. Well, Wolf, able to clear out a decent amount of wards here. And SKT just on a campaign to, like we mentioned, keep the lanes pushed and keep the vision on their side. And now they can start to pressure that Baron a little bit too. Yes, that's a good point. They can do the Baron pretty quickly. Yeah. Especially when the second blade completes onto Corky. It's going to be a while before that happens right now. Bang not really sitting on any gold to speak of. To he go bought back. it. Oh, he just bought it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's why. Yes, that is why. Good timing from Bang, just right as that blade was available, goes back and picks it up. Yeah, Kate's and right a... as the opportunity to pressure Baron appeared too. So here we go, Marin still on the split push. Someday, very much lagging behind. He'd love a Tiamat right now, but so he could actually push out just a little bit faster and start to move this ward line backwards from SKT within his own jungle. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, I someday just does not want to fight Faker right now. Can't blame him. Well, there's also so many people on the top side of the map. He's just afraid because he doesn't have any vision. Yeah. All he has is a ward and tri brush, and he knows how fast people can appear. Now, KT, they, they still have the Sivir to make the picks. They still have the ability to collapse on someone very, very quickly. And they have to use that advantage right now or as soon as possible so that they can actually just get back into this one. And SK Telecom doesn't really have a good way to disengage. So, I mean, between the Lee Sin and the Sivir, you'd think they, there'd be some work to be done. But I guess it's going to be banged down in this bottom lane. Someday's just not confident in his ability to deal with Marin's rumble. Hmm. It just seems like it's going to be so hard for KT to find those fights, though, you know? Well, that's what you have the Sivir for. And you have the mobility over a wall, the kick of Lee Sin. It, it's not... It's not going to be that hard. It's not like Rumble can run particularly quickly. Which you'd think, being that little uh, little dude was making a super robot, you'd think he would have made it a little bit quicker. I think I would have. Well, he had to put more guns in it, though, and flamethrowers and flamethrower fuel and things like that. Sometimes that does you just slow don't, it down. You don't have enough room to put bigger leg motors in. He follows the the mech warrior principles of... Uh, <laughs> Mech building, I guess. Now, the real question is, why didn't you just put wheels on the damn thing? <laughs> That's true. It been faster. I mean, let's be real. You don't really need something that, with legs in Summoner's Rift, everything is like a nicely graded ramp. It's all very flat. Maybe he's worried about, like, the engine getting water in it if he goes through the river. Well, I think he's worried Checkmate. about that. <laughs> Whether he has wheels or not, Doa. Yeah, but, I mean, he could have, like, waterproof legs. Yeah. Rubber, rubber is waterproof. What's your point? I mean, uh, <laughs> is the whole bottom side waterproof, though? Uh, you could definitely make cars like that, yes. And what about Piltover Customs Blitzcrank? He doesn't seem to do so too badly. I don't know. We don't see Blitzcrank anymore, do we? <laughs> I think, uh, think he finally got in the river too much. Must be it. Yep. He just rusted out right through the bottom. True enough. That's why they have that skin. Rusty Blitzcrank. Yep. <laughs> that one doesn't have wheels, though. I know. Wouldn't have helped him anyway. So you admit that with legs, he would also get rusty. I suppose. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> hey, sorry. I'm trying to pay attention to this game right now. No, you're not. I don't have. I don't have time to <laughs> talk about these asides with you. I'm trying to like, you know, think a lot about the strategy and and you know the tactics and things people are doing. Oh, that's a new approach to your casting, though. I'm impressed. Trying to change things up a little bit. <laughs> you know. 
Oh, Benki. Oh, Benki does get a little bit caught here. Uses that chilling smite onto someday. Edge taking a lot of damage. Has to play full trickster over the wall. Equalizer drop down. Faker catching up. Arrow pops that ultimate. Oh, Bang's going to Valkyrie forward, actually. Oh, they got to be careful. They could turn on to Bang here. Yeah, Bang backing away. A lot of damage coming in, though, for SK Telecom. It's a lot of pressure. Could that be a Baron, maybe? Man. Everyone on KT is just so squishy that I have yeah. to say I underestimated the amount of damage that Bang was going to be doing against this composition with the Corky because there's no, I mean, if we look at score right now, he's building a Randwins. He probably should be getting a an Aegis first right here just to prevent them from getting poked out like that because Bang by himself just chased off like five of them. It's pretty good. Walking right in front of his team, and there was no equalizer, and they couldn't turn back because they were already all at half health. And the threat of Faker just coming in and alpha striking absolutely everyone was ridiculous. When are they going to turn on this Baron? It's got to be soon. Trying to go into the jungle to get a little bit more vision down. Faker is building a Randuins now. Yeah, man, you got to get in and stay tanky <laughs> while you take people apart. I mean, if he gets in with an Alpha Strike and he hits with the Randuin's active, everyone's going to be slowed so that Bang is just able to annihilate them with rockets. Yep. Dragon is up. SK Telecom could go for that as well. They've gotten the first two already this game. Dragons haven't been taken quite as fast. Uh, I, noticed, I just noticed Wolf has a Zeke's Herald too. That is so good with the two Blades of the Ruined King because the, the life the lifesteal tanking from SK Telecom against the limited CC from KT is going to be very effective. Wow, easy dragon taken by SK Telecom, and now they've got a little movement burst as well, too. Yeah, SKT just kind of slowly grinding to a probable win here. I can't believe they're doing this. They've been able to put the pressure on, man. <laughs> They edge have. Has, edge has gotten a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of an edge, I guess, for lack of a better term. But the rest of KT hasn't been able to really work with that to find picks, to win team fights, nothing like that. I'm just surprised that KT and especially Score focused so much on the mid lane this game, when I think that getting someday ahead would have been more effective in terms of being able to close. Here oh, we go. Several, but Wolf just pops a whirlwind, and that's really all he needs to do. Uh -oh. oh boy, uh -oh. here we go. Score gets caught. Nice ult from Bengi. Faker gets kicked away. He's just going to walk right back in, though. Highlander makes you pretty fast. Exhaust onto Arrow as Bang starts to do damage down to Fizz. Edge actually got taken out. Now Faker getting those resets. There goes Arrow. Oh, and Faker's no. chasing Score down. Double kill, meanwhile, for Marin. Alpha strike. There goes Score. Faker. A lot of kills there. And now they think they can go probably right onto Baron after someday gets taken down by Marin. Marin just chasing him. Flash still available for someday. Not even going to bother to use it, though. Nice knockup by Wolf, slowing him down, and Harpoon <laughs> over the wall. Wow. Ace. Wolf just there with the tornado on the other side. Gets the knockup so Marin can stay in range for those Harpoons. See, it's the roaming aggressive pick, Jana. It's back. I, I see. <laughs> I see that. Yep. And let's watch that fight again. Well, what happened to Edge on the side? He didn't have the playful trickster anymore. Gets the ult on the bang. There it is. Flashes forward. Cool. That dies in the end. Now, how does Bang die? Marin just roasted Edge. I don't know how Bang died. Oh. I think he must have just died oh, to ignite. Just to burn, yeah. So, yep. And Faker getting a bunch of kills too. Three, one, and four. Now that Master Yi finishes his Randuins, and he has enough to pick up a pickaxe. Besides that, going for that. Last Whisper next, perhaps. Yep. Well. That's right. And the last Whisper we're going to be hearing in solo queue is mid or feed. <laughs> For everyone that wants to play Master Yi on Korea. It's not now. even Thanks good is the thing. Like, I Don't tell uh, solo queue that, man. <laughs> Just when I thought it was going to be safe again. I, nope. It is. It works as part of this cleanup. but And Bang is doing so much damage that his rocket accuracy is so high especially with the equalizer as well to chuck people down that you can clean it up. But it's still, you look at this pick and it's just so risky and it's so binary and predictable. Oh, here we go. Whoa, look at that equalizer. Goodbye, Arrow. Marin picks up a first kill. Edge, chilling smite onto him. Benki chasing him down. Wolf helps pick up a kill on to Fixer. Support versus support. Faker, meanwhile, is like, ah, oh, they don't even need me now. 
He's doing <laughs> Master Yi things. That's right. Split pushing. Killing turrets extremely quickly with that build. Oh, yeah. Well, we've reached the point in the game where it's looking very unlikely that KT is going to be able to come back on this one. And they're probably just going to walk in casually and take an inhibitor turret, maybe even the inhibitor as well. Yep, just moving forward. Marin just going to zone people out with the flame spitter. Well, I don't know if that was the greatest idea to come back on that one someday. Well, Faker was actually just meditate tanking out that turret, waiting for his team to come up right <laughs> there. Has a lot of HP. A uh, mid inhibitor goes down during all that. They're going to get top as well. And man, SK Telecom always able to take so much off of so little yet again. It's just incredible how they can. Yeah. <sighs> little pick and they end up with two inhibitors out of it. I mean, just their, their, their setup in these games where they get the quirky rockets with the, the Yi. It's, they play around these wacky comps so perfectly. It makes them so terrifying, too, because when you play against these guys, you have no idea what they're going to do. They have so many comps. Their, their strategies are so versatile. They make stuff like this work. Right, and it's just one of those things where you look at this composition and you say, well, there's only... That was really the only way they could make it work was around the poke from Corky and Rumble. Yeah. And it seems so unlikely that they're actually going to be able to execute that, but then they do. You'd think, too, that Master Yi would be a champion that you'd be getting wins against, like, Spenu and I am with. But no, they got a win against CJ, and now they're going to get a win against KT with this Master Yi pick. Yeah, barring some sort of total meltdown here from SK Telecom, which would be very uncharacteristic of them this season, or... Yeah, I'd be pretty surprised. ...in the last several months. Now they're just gonna do a two-man Baron with double lifesteal tanking. Why not? I don't know if they can quite do this, though. Yeah, they're gonna bring in the rest. They're gonna get the Baron easily, and that is their second of the game, I believe. And then they can just walk down and take the, uh, take the fourth Dragon, too. Total domination from SK Telecom in game number two here. And especially after how competitive this this reminds me so much of the last game, Doa, that we or the last series that SKT played against CJ. Yeah. At the definitely. beginning of that one, it was very competitive. It really was very back and forth. You know, CJ looked like they were ahead, like they may have been able to take that game. Then Faker goes nuts on Victor and turns the game around, just like last time. KT sticking in there early, looking pretty good, and then Faker goes nuts. And then oh. the second game, it's a master Yi comp, it's total oh, domination. You. And both KT and CJ have been unable to deal with this. That's because SKT doesn't just beat you, they break you. That's what happens. They broke CJ. Now the Master Yi pain train continues as KT is down two inhibitors, possibly three pretty soon as a Baron buff SK Telecom comes in. Equalizer drop bank, he gets a great alt as well too. Alt on the bank from Nautilus. Edge comes in to try to find a kill. Zonius, he's gonna go down immediately after that ends. Meanwhile, Faker grabs a double kill as well. Edge does go down. Fixer trying to get away, gets roasted. There's a reset. Arrow still alive. Triple kill for Faker on that Master Yi. And that is it. Oh, Faker goes in, picks up the kill for the Quadra. <laughs> and on that note, Faker dies, gets the Quadra kill, and SK Telecom gets a 2-0 over KT GG. Unbelievable. <laughs> really. Entertaining, but unbelievable. It, it's incredibly entertaining, and it's very impressive it. that they're able to do <laughs> this. You look at the narrow timing windows and the very few ways they have to win, yet they pull it off with such grace. How is this team not going to lose this season? How is this team not going to be the champions again? Uh, well, it's a long season. we got a lot of time left, and we'll see if other teams can step it up. Certainly, I, I guess, but... as SK Telecom continues their best of three win streak to 15 consecutive. It's amazing. It is looking very hard to stop them. It's pretty crazy, too, because you go back and you think about their, their perfect season. They did have a season where they didn't lose a single game. That was best of twos, though. They're playing more games between last round of this season.